Hello and welcome to Unit 3 of the Time Recording and Resource Planning Study Week. With this unit, we shall cover time accounts, overtime calculation rules, premium pay and time valuation. There are three types of time accounts in the system. The first is the quota account, which is the type that is used for vacations. They usually have quantity deductions when time is posted to them. For example, a leave request would cause the deduction of an, a number of hours or days in the vacation time account. The second is the working time account, as we have seen in the previous unit. It collects the deviations of the employee's recorded time when compared to their work schedule. And lastly, we have the statistical time account, which can be seen as a collector of time records based on, uh, which based on configuration rules that a time administrator might want to report on. They typically accrue time postings since they are used as data collectors. Now the recurrence, it specifies how often instances of a time account type are created. They could either be permanent, which means that, at, for, that for all time postings, there's only one time account instance for that entire time profile validity. They could be recurring, which means that they would have different instances based on the recurrence frequency, which could be monthly or yearly, for example, and each having a corresponding bookable period. There are also ad hoc time accounts, which are non-rule-based quota accounts. They are assigned to an employee manually as necessary, for example, your maternity or paternity leave. Time account rules. In the business configuration of time accounts, Rules can be created to define the number of hours that can be posted automatically and what has to be done for the remaining balance at the end of that time account period. For quota accounts, you have entitlement, which is usually a one-time addition during the lifetime of that time account instance. For example, an employee may be entitled to 21 days of leave per year, each time account instance being one year long. The time accrual rule to here re typically refers to increments that happen throughout the lifetime of that time account. For example, an, a, an employee may accrue two days of leave every month. With working time accounts, however, the accrual rules are different. Here the time credits can be calculated with either the planned hours on that particular day or based on the average value specified as part of the time model configuration or in the employee's time file. When it comes to period and processing rules, these are executed during the period closure of the time account at the end of their period. You, you can determine what happens to that remaining balance. Either they are transferred to another time account instance or they are carry forwarded to the new time accounts crea instance created or they are marked for payout to the employee or they just have the value set to zero. Manual adjustments are used when it's not possible to set up rules in the by design system to have the right quantity in the time account. The time administrator can do that in the time file for that particular time account instance. It's also possible to have these values computed in an external system and push these values into the by design system via services. This feature can be scoped under custom adjustments. With time recording, we invariably have to deal with overtime. At first, let's look at the duration-based time recording. In this example, an employee has eight hours of planned working time, but records time for 10 hours. For the system to automatically handle these two excess hours, there are two possibilities. If an employee is assigned a working time account, this, this difference of two hours is automatically credited as we have discussed in the last unit. Else, it's also possible that an overtime rule is applied to the time recording via what's called a time recording profile, which is assigned in the time file. But more about this in a couple of slides ahead. Alternatively, the employee manually assigns a premium pay for these two hours of excess time recorded. What happens on uh, a clock-based time recording? Uh, in the situation, for example, an employee records time in the night hours outside of the planned working time 
the only way of marking this time recording as relevant for overtime is manually assigning that time record entry with the appropriate premium pay. There is no automatic handling uh, of the overtime in clock-based time recording. So what exactly is premium pay? The premium pay is an entity that helps qualify time recording that's done under special conditions like overtime or night shift work. The premium pay is used in conjunction with a time type. Based on configuration, one can get the system to perform special handling on those time records which have a premium pay attached to it. But it's important to note, a premium pay can be assigned to any time recording that has a time type productive hours or special attendance. Let's look at the percentage configuration, the percentage increase here. It basically specifies whether the number of hours have to be increased by a, a particular proportion. For example, if a time recording of 4 hours is assigned a premium pay whose percentage value is set to 125%, then there's a premium value, that's the proportionate increase, is 25% of it, which is 1 hour. The base value is the original 4 hours. Further settings can determine whether which portion or all of these now newly computed 5 hours in total are meant to be paid out to the user or banked to a time account. There's another setting on the premium pay called the regular pay. This means that the time recording with such a premium pay would either be considered to be part of the working time account postings or must be specially considered as overtime by the system. Finally, we come to the time recording profile. What is it? It's a collection of valuation rules that can be applied to the employee time records. This time recording profile is assigned in the time file of the employee. One set of rules is the automatic determination of overtime based on threshold values. This can be evaluated on the time recorded on a daily, weekly or monthly basis. For the weekly and monthly uh, thresholds, the comparison is done with the summed up duration of all times of that week or that month. There are two thresholds which are available for evaluation. Based on the crossing of these thresholds, the evaluated number of hours are assigned a premium pay. The thresholds can be either assigned to a fixed number or it's based on the work schedule of the employee, either the planned working time or the average working time which is specified on that time model or by the time administrator. In this example here, we see something called accredited absence. Accredited absence is an absence that would be included in the calculation of overtime. In the time recording profile, it, one can specify the list of absence time types that would be taken as this list of credited absences. If you go to premium pay rules, one can also configure premium pay rules within this. The system automatically assigns the specified premium pay when a user records time on a weekend or a non-working day, for example. It can also be configured to have a unique premium pay assigned based on the day of the week. There are, other, uh, there are also other types of rules pertaining to the automatic deduction of break time, which is specific to Germany, or the ability to edit time punches, but these are outside the scope of this unit. Finally, we come to time valuation. Time valuation, which is a core part of time administration here, of the time administration process, this is a process that evaluates all the recorded time in the employee's uh, that the employee has recorded. It evaluates the employee's time profile, the business configuration of all the time entities, and determines the time account postings, premium pay assignments. It creates the evaluated times and optionally transfers them to downstream processes in case of project time recording. It is triggered automatically whenever there is a release, approval, or activation of a time recording or if there's a change in any of the employee master data that's in the time profile. The period closure date. The period closure date is a date up, up to which the system considers all the time recorded data to be complete and hence evaluated and hence all the time account postings determined. 
when the employee is hired, the period closure date is set by default to a date prior to this hire date. Now there's a periodic job that runs in the system that performs the time evaluation from this period, uh, period closure date onwards until the current date. From the time account perspective, it is responsible for the time account instance creation and the execution of the accrual rules and execution of period and processing rules. Based on the public holiday calendar of the employee, it determines whether a date is meant to show as a day off in the work schedule or not. This periodic job which runs typically on a daily basis, daily basis is the day closure run. If the time valuation does not yield any errors, the period closure date is updated to this current date. The, the, the results of the period closure run can be seen from the view period closure results of the administer day closure runs. An important concept here. If there is a change in the business configuration of any of the time entities such that the effective date of the change is a date prior to the period closure date, it's important that time valuation is triggered from this changed date onwards. The revaluation of time data prior to the period closure date does not happen automatically, which may result in incorrect time valuation results. This re-triggering of the time valuation from a different date can be done for multiple employees via the administer day closure runs, or if you want to do this for a single employee, you can do so via the run day closure for a single employee. This slide pretty much summarizes a lot of what we learned in the last couple of units. When a user submits a time recording in the timesheet, valuation is triggered. All the uh, configuration settings based on the time recording profile, the time type of the time recording, the time accounts associated with it, the planned working time on that particular day, they're all taken into, in, in, into account in this valuation process. This results in postings in either the working time account or any other time accounts which are specified. It may result in times marked as payout. It may result in the creation of evaluated premium. And in the case of the project time recording or on a service order, a sales order time recording, it would create documents in the downstream process. Now let's go into the system for a quick demo. I'm again in the system as an HR administrator. This time, I'm going to open up the time file of a user, Robert Dukan. In the time file, let's take a quick look at the settings. Let's go to the time profile first of this user. We see that this user is now an exception-based time recorder. We also see that a time recording profile for called overtime rules is assigned to this user, which means that the system must be doing an automatic calculation of overtime or some automatic assignment of premium pay. If we open up the time account rules, we see that the employee has a working time account, the employee has a paid time off vacation time account, and it also has, the employee has an overtime quota account. Let's look at what the time account balances look like. And let's pay attention first to the vacations. If you're looking at the paid time off for 2017, we see that there are a lot of postings which are there. But if we, let, if we go down to the earliest postings, we see on the 1st of January 2017, there's an entitlement of 40 hours. So it clearly indicates to us that in business configuration, there's an entitlement uh, uh, rule which are set. We also see that as of the 1st of April, there is a carry forward that's performed. It also indicates to us that in business configuration, we have a period and processing rule on this particular time account type, which says that at the bookable period, the end of the bookable period, which we see over here, 31st of March 2018, there is going to be a oh, or uh, actually it's for the previous time account, there is going to be a carry forward of a set number of hours to the next instance of the time account. The rest of the deductions that we, that we see here correspond to vacations that the employee has uh, created in the system. 
if we go to uh, uh, the time account 2018, we, uh, we would see something very similar. Now, let's look at the working time account. Um, we can see that the working time account doesn't have any postings, which really tells us that since this is uh, an exception-based time recorder, the, uh, uh, the um, user, Robert, has not really recorded any time which is beyond what's expected, that's beyond what's the calculated duration of uh, that's assigned to him. We also look at this overtime quota account, and we see that doesn't have any postings either. So let's do one thing. Let's go to the employee times tab and let's record time on a holiday and see what happens. So I'm going to go to the month of February and I'm going to, going to create a, a, a leave record for, oh, uh, I'm going to do a time recording for the 24th of February. So it, it's clear for me 24th of February is a day off because it's a Saturday as per the employee's uh, work schedule. I'm going to state that the employee has performed uh, some actual hours worked, and I'm going to say he's done four hours of work. And save. Now let's look at the results. Let's move to the time account balances and see what we see, what we have. We see that the working time account is instantly updated to four hours, which is great. It, uh, it just says that, yeah, there may have been, um, there is an excess of um, planned working hours which are there and hence it's posted here. But we also interestingly see that in the overtime quota account, we see six hours which have come in, which was previously zero. Why could this be? We know that the employee, in the, when we look at the time profile, uh, under the basic data, we know that the employee has a time recording profile assigned to him. So let's see what this time profi uh, recording profile is all about. For this, I will switch to an administrator's view to take a look at this time recording profile. So here I am in business configuration. In business configuration, I have gone to the fine tuning activity, opened up the time type, and I'm opening up the time recording profile that is present for uh, in the system. And we can see this time recording profile, there's one which is called overtime rules. And if I navigate down, I see that there are overtime rules which are set up in the system. And specifically under premium rules, we're saying there's a premium pay rule which has been set up. Let's look at what this premium pay rule is. I have it already opened up for, to, um, for simplicity, simplicity's sake. And here in this premium pay rule, what are we seeing? We're seeing this premium pay has a percentage of 150, which kind of makes sense why these four hours now became six hours when we saw it being posted in that overtime quota account. We are saying that everything is banked and we are also specifying the time account to which this particular, uh, the time recording associated with it has to be posted. So this explains why those four hours recorded on the weekend are coming as six hours in the overtime quota account. Another small additional point, since I've marked this as regular time, you, we are seeing that this is also posted in the working time account as four hours. If this were not there, it would not have been posted in the working time account. So that's it for the demo. Let's do a quick round off of what we have learned as part of this unit. We have seen time accounts, time account accrual rules, and period and processing, processing rules in pretty good detail. We have looked at what overtime and premium pay is all about had a look at the time recording profile. We have done the time valuation as well and seen how it all fits together to finally cement what the time recording fundamentals are about. Thank you so much for attending this unit. I shall see you in the next one.